And here we go again with Michael Jackson's Moonwalk. Given the uh, mm. the celebration of the movie that we had last week, we are jumping into the game once more, so Matt can appreciate um, just just the a little the, bit of context. Yeah, the context of this game. So, it, so you know, it doesn't seem weird that Michael Jackson is looking for children and and finding them hidden in uh, in closets and things. No, funny enough, that now seems perfectly rational compared to the film content of Moonwalker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why does this not start with a uh, a twenty seven minute long montage introducing us to Michael Jackson? Um, it was more fifteen minutes, but yeah, okay. I'll, I'll oh, on. yeah, then Speed Demon kicks in, doesn't it? And Speed Demon kicks in. Well, no, no, it doesn't it's um. Uh, what's the one with the children? Is it bad? Uh, bad. Yes. Yeah. 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 You're right. Yeah. You, you just uh, eternally. Um, haunted by Speed Demon, as uh, as I was as, as a child. So yeah, but not for the right it. reasons. <laughs> you just I bored. wish I could be haunted by the the Gumby faces and the Tangerine faced man, but instead it's like oh that music video that just didn't end, and then he danced with a rabbit camel thing version of himself, and it just went on and on and on. You're the only person who sees a camel, I'm sure. It's a camel. It's not a camel. He's got it's the a face rabbit. of Donkey from Shrek. Well, it's, donkey from a... Shrek isn't it a camel. He's a muleish creature, some, <laughs> some kind of horse. A camel is a kind of horse. It's a desert horse. A desert horse, okay. Um, a lumpy desert horse. A lumpy desert ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. David Attenborough attests to the very same thing. Yeah, I, I think that's what he, uh, that's what he co coined them, isn't it? When he discovered <laughs> them in uh, 1957. Indeed. Behold the majesty of the lumpy desert horse. <laughs> I'm so very old. They just pile the animals up next to me now and I talk at them. Uh, so, yeah, for a bit of context, this is sort of the smooth criminal video, I guess. Um, hmm. Although it's, it's, it's more upmarket kind of 30s club than uh, the one we had in in the smooth criminal video. This, um, yeah. yeah, it's got better lighting. It does. It does, yeah. But more children. <laughs> Which I don't know, seems a bit of a trade-off. <laughs> you can see things better, but unfortunately, those things are children. <laughs> um, so I think I've put on uh, a few cheats. I've put uh, well, I, I I went for invincibility at first and couldn't find it, so I put um, uh, you know uh, endless lives, and then I found invincibility. So I I'm, I'm doubling up on the on the cheats just in case. Um, <laughs> You're immortal several times over. Yes. Uh, Just to make sure. Which Michael Jackson, unfortunately, wasn't. But uh, hey-ho, I'm sure. But it could be a meta thing. It could be for every person that typed in the, the god cheat for Moonwalker, it robbed him of like a year of his life. <gasps> Perhaps you're right. And it's like, I'm giving back to the people the only way I know how. And they'll feel bad because they're cheating at a video game knowing they're killing me. And then they'll <laughs> stop. And mankind will learn a valuable lesson about the truth of mankind. Oh, dead. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, but we can we can continue. So we'll have a brief um, contextual discussion for every level that we find ourselves on, and you can you can say, "Oh yeah, yeah I, I totally understand that now." Which bugs and drugs, bugs and drugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you? So you said that you watched the um, the episode of the R and R again today i did it yes did. i'm i'm a massive narcissist and so i enjoy the sound of my own voice uh, <laughs> so i i listened back to moonwalker because i had um i think i came off as more of a cynic oh absolutely the recording that i meant to be um so i thought i i got to listen back and make sure that i'm not just some party pooping buzz killer and no i think i make some valid <laughs> points and that it's clear i'm having fun with the material yeah um but in in the wake of having listened back to our own commentary on Moonwalker, I now think, oh, Moonwalker, yeah. Oh, how much fun that was. <laughs> <laughs> I've Mandela affected myself. Yeah. Or, uh, no, what's the word? Um, uh, something bias. Um, ah. I could only think recency for some reason. Uh, mm. But I don't think that quite right works. No, it's not that one. But um, all the same, I've I've now sort of tricked myself into, through my own enjoyment of it, now believe the film itself is entertaining and good yeah well yeah I, th I think that's how things work really isn't it you have you associate things with them um, oh christ i forgot these guys don't die um you associate other things with things that you perhaps weren't too keen on but it makes it better i didn't explain that too well but there are definitely things like that that uh that i find um are the case 
struggling well, to think. Well, the Resident Evil series. No, stop saying that. And Twilight. <laughs> you keep saying that, and I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that or Transformers. One of them has to be worth it. No, Twilight. That's the only one. Uh, <laughs> That's not fair. That one actually turned out to be rather good. <laughs> Confirmation bias. That's Confirmation. The one I was looking for. Yes. Uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Ah, all it took was a bit more Baileys. Got there in the end. <laughs> what else will happen if the more you drink? We we need to find that. We need to um, turn that into a thing. The more Matt drinks, the more he becomes learned. <laughs> it's learned, Daniel. It's pronounced <laughs> learned. <laughs> um. So yeah, you've um you've had, oh there's a, there's a cat in the window. You've had Ooh. um. The week off so far, I think, haven't you? Really, you've been back home. You've been uh, enjoying the the uh, the PlayStations and the uh, the, the Final Fantasies and uh, mm. stuff. Uh, any any other interesting bits and pieces that uh, you'd like to share uh, with the class? Well, I was tricked. <gasps> I was tricked into watching Encanto, Enchanto, that new Disney oh, film that you were criticizing a few weeks ago. Uh, Yes, because out of context, we need to talk about Bruno was an absolute assault on my eardrums. Mm. And I got to admit, <gasps> I really enjoyed the movie. No, it, it's Matt. no tangled. I know, I know. It it took a good twenty minutes or so, maybe maybe even forty, to start getting into it. But um, yeah, I think it was the song um, "Pressure," "Pressure," something or other, round about the the halfway point, and I thought. Actually, I'm really enjoying this song. I'm liking the beat. I'm liking the voice. I'm liking the singer. I'm liking the visuals. Um, it helps that the main character is played by uh, Rosa Diaz from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, who every now and again, it slips out. And it's like, there's Rosa. There she is <laughs> hiding beneath all of this. That definitely helps. Um, the film is gorgeous to look at. I mean, it, it shouldn't really be said by this point that, you know, Disney animated films look absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, this was a, uh, a stunningly good looking film. And uh, yeah, it sort of got me into the like, yay, Disney sort of mindset, which is always dangerous. So um, yeah, I, I did a sweep of HMV yesterday and picked up a load of other Disney films that I haven't watched yet, oh. just to sort of bring myself up to speed. So I've got um, Ray and the Last Dragon, Frozen 2 to look forward to, Coco, and I watched Luca today. And it, it, I'll tell you what the problem is. The difficulty is that because Pixar and Disney are now you know, in a battle for just CGI wars, it gets really difficult to tell which one is produced by which company anymore. Mm. Um, so I had to actually, you know, log on to the, the Wikipedia and go, okay, so what is a Disney film? What's specifically missing from my collection? Um, but I heard good things about Lucas, so I thought, ah, fuck it, you know, for four quid, I'll, I'll watch Luca, why not? Mm. And it's it's a really charming film. It's... It's pretty much what you'd expect from uh, a literal sort of fish out of water story. Um, and it, it's about, um, I don't know if you know the plot at all, but it's set in Italy during the 1950s. So about the 1950s. Um, and it's two sea monsters um, and their race, when they're sort of dried off, they look human. So they, they sort of run away from home and they're hiding out in this Italian village and they just sort of get... It's very Studio Ghibli. They just get ensconced in the local culture. Um, and, you know, there's sort of the drama of the friends eventually fall out over a woman and the, the low point in the second act and then they all come back together for a big triumphant hurrah at the end. There's no surprises there. But, um, yeah, I, I found the friendship between Luca, uh, Luca and uh, Armando, I think his name was, or Alberto, Really, really well done. I I thoroughly believed in them as friends. Uh, they had a, a charming dynamic. And I'm not going to lie, by the end of the film, there was a line that squeezed a tear out of me. Not crying, but just... It was an emotional moment that caught me off guard. And it, it, it got a tear out of me, hmm. which I was not expecting. Um, so fair play, Luca. Luca. Um, yeah, I rather enjoyed that. But Encanto, catchy enjoyable enough it's certainly no tangled it's certainly no renaissance era disney but it's far better than i gave it credit for but that's because i was pitching at the you know the frozen and wreck it ralph 2 ralph breaks the internet level of disney crap so with trepidation i'm now dipping my toe back in the water to go okay let's let's go back two three years and see what their output was out of that dreadful frozen era that they're in so 
you know, watch this space. They'll come trickling in over time. Interesting. You're not really helping yourself, though, are you? Because uh, you really laid into Encanto when you uh, were kind of judging it from a song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're teaching us really not to pay any attention to your first impressions. <laughs> exactly. My first impressions are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, folks. If Matt watches a trailer or has any kind of inkling intuitional response ignore it <laughs> well this is why i don't go near promotional footage for the most part these days ever mm. since iron man 3 had the best teaser trailer ever and the worst mcu movie in existence <gasps> How dare you? yes no yes i'm holding iron man 3 is the worst marvel no. movie no no, no 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 what beats Not it okay captain Ant marvel and Ant-Man and the wasp um <sighs> no no i'm not i'm not gonna have that Ant Man and the wasp is more forgettable Ant Man and the Wasp is totally forgettable, actually. Well, Captain Marvel angry. at least has uh, a good soundtrack. No. And it looks nice. Uh, but Iron Man 3 is just a slog that just undoes everything and then has to be retconned out by Age of Ultron in order to make the, the through line work. The whole Mandarin plot is awful. Killian as uh what's his name killing Kilgrave as the real mandarin was an awful villain it gave gwyneth paltrow even more screen time and that woman can act about as well as she can emote to humans <laughs> uh the the action scenes weren't particularly well done the the final fight wasn't particularly interesting yeah i really don't like iron man 3 i i think it sucks black panther is shit but at least it's got a few nuggets in there. But I really, really do not like Iron Man 3. And not because I'm a comic pure. It's like, oh, they changed the Mandarin. So like, no, it's just a shit film. <laughs> I don't care what they did to the Mandarin. It just doesn't help that they fuck the Mandarin up, given how good he could have been from the teaser trailer. So, uh, yeah, ever since 2013, I've been really hesitant to judge anything by its first impression. Um, often because they're wrong, as I proved with Encanto. Mm. Even though it's not a great film, it's just better than the slop I was expecting. More importantly, do you remember the, the car park scene from Moonwalker? That we've just um, I remember Michael Jackson turning into a car. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, being, uh, I'm being facetious because uh, there wasn't a car park scene. But uh, <laughs> here we go anyway. Is this film having to do a Lego Star Wars Skywalker saga and fill in the blanks missing from the movie? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, I don't know if you noticed the, the outside in the streets was... Uh, not so much like the outside in the streets. I don't know where all these gang members have come from, but, you know, Michael Jackson has to kill them anyway. I recognise uh, the dogs. Isn't it interesting that the the budget that they would have had for making the film, you know, the, the, the elaborate set that is running around, escaping from... Um, God, what's the name of the, the villain in it? Joe Pesci's character. He spells his name out on numerous occasions, and I can't remember what uh, it is. He, I think the game it's, calls him Mr. Big. Is it Ledeo? Ladeo, that was it. Yeah. L I D E O, Ladeo. Um, yeah, they spent all the money for the big chase scene through the streets on this video game and fleshing out. <laughs> so the, the video game world is actually far more rich, detailed, and complex than the movie version. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. I think you're right. Um, okay, so um, we did say in the past that we need to do Disney. Uh, you know, modern Disney retrospectives because they'd be mm. interesting to do. Uh, so you'd recommend Encanto for that, would you? Um, recommend in the same way that I'd rec recommend Moana, you know? Really? It's... You think it's as, uh, it's as relevant as Moana? Not as relevant, but just sort of on that level. Mm. You know, it's... Moana's perfectly fine. It's it's a really enjoyable movie. I'm not going to deny, deny it. I've I've watched Moana a couple of times and I really enjoy say, it. I, I, I thought you found it was one of the uh, one of the best ones of recent years. Of recent years, yeah. But when you sort of match up what it has to go up against, Wreck It Ralph feels more like a Pixar film, which is peculiar. Oh, Pratt. Yeah. Um. So and same with Zoot Zootopia, Zootropolis. Zootopia. Um, they feel more like Pixar films than Disney films. Oh, so, is that a Disney film? Yeah. For you some see reason what I mean? I... It gets really difficult to keep track of what's what anymore. For some reason, it feels like a DreamWorks film to me, Zootopia. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's sort of on par of like, the new benchmark of Disney quality, which is your Zootopias, your Wreck-It Ralphs, your mm. Moanas. Mm. Um, but it's not exactly the, the lofty heights of, you know, the classics, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, Aladdin. Yeah. 
Sure. Um, it sort of feels like, and this is no slight against Hercules or Hunchback at all, but it sort of feels more like, you know, they're like the... Um, the middleweight tiers, you've got the heavy oh, lifters. Absolutely. Yeah, they are. And then you've got your Aladdin's, your Pocahontas, and, and that's sort of like what came after the flood sort of thing. Yeah. That's where Moana and Encanto sort of sit. They're, they're comfortable middleweight films that are better than what I expect from a company that, you know, doesn't have my respect anymore. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, Princess and the Frog is a film because I've got a nephew and, and when he comes over... Or it used to be the case where I literally watched these films on, on repeat. Um, so you had Princess and the Frog was a favourite. <clears throat> Moana was a favourite. Mm. Um, and then Frozen 2 was for a little bit. Not that it was a favourite, but it just kind of had it on. Mm. And I think I, I've i never seen a film look as unremarkable just from it being on in the background as Frozen 2. Um, it is odd, isn't it? The colour palette are very washed out lilacs yeah and dead trees those i mean for all, for all the films that have been on in the background that i've kind of taken an interest in and, and thought oh, I, I, need, I need to i need to find out more about what's happening in this story rather than just you know dipping in and out for 10 15 minutes at a time um you know trolls sing all these yeah. kind of i know yeah i mean you you have that oh, reaction. sorry i thought when you said trolls sing i thought you meant the troll song from frozen oh no sorry no the the actual oh, yeah, films. I see what you mean now yeah the films troll and the film sing yeah gotcha exactly <laughs> you know they, they all have their uh their positives in in different ways and um how do you get back down there um and their charming moments and you can see why kids like them and you can see why adults like them and, and all that jazz um but Frozen just, I mean, cards on the table, I'm, I'm sure we've said this many times before, didn't like the first one. I mm. thought the first half an hour, it, uh, the first time I watched it, the first half an hour was great, really enjoyed it. Um, and then the rest of the film falls apart. Yeah. And um, Frozen 2 is just, seems to not even have a moment where there's kind of that initial high, it's just all a... Uh, all are like mundane and so serious for itself. It's just I'm baffling, baffling. Yeah, the, isn't the it all about trying to find out what Elsa's origin is? Something like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, hmm. It's so. it's a really strange one, isn't it? I mean, there, there's probably a reason that they're selling it for about four quid rather than you know the usual tenner. You know? Yeah. If you can if you can get Disney to knock its Blu-rays down to a tenner then usually you're doing okay. But the fact that Frozen 2 is only, what, two years out and already they're saying, we got we got to shift this. Mm. That's well, pretty telling. I mean, I feel as though it's, they've shot themselves in the foot because it doesn't feel as relevant as it did after the first film. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, it's as though they've they've harmed their own intellectual property. I mean, Elsa and um, Anna, Anna are still going to be, you know, characters that kids gravitate to, I'm sure. But um, And the perverts. <laughs> Myself included, <laughs> as I Google them naked right now. <laughs> Rule thirty-four <laughs> highlight. Um, um, ah, there's it. Ah, did you see it? Oh, god damn it! I missed it. Leaping zombies. No, but the, there's a shooting star. Ah! If you get the shooting star, then you turn into Robo Michael. Oh. Or you leave. You just leave. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Until some other player wishes you back in. It happens completely at random. It can fall anywhere. And uh, on these, on these, I think it's just the zombie levels. Um, actually, that's a point. I don't know why there are zombie. This is this is a callback to Thriller, obviously. Thriller, of course. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have any relation to Moonwalker. So this is this is the devs getting a bit uh, caught up in themselves and, and a bit thinking, ah, we need to go outside of the Moonwalker law here. There's no speed demon level, for instance, which oh, is a shame. Oh yeah, that would have made more sense. Yeah. Or, uh, so we need to take a leaf out of Michael Jackson's book and find filler material for this for this product. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, even like a uh, kind of a funhouse theme for Leave Me Alone, perhaps. Or mm, that would have worked. Now uh, I'm just thinking of funhouse. Remember funhouse? Yeah, of course. That was on uh, Friday, I think, wasn't it? It was on Fridays, and I used to rush home from school to watch that. <laughs> would have loved to have been a part of that. Uh, the, the go-karts was always the best. Yeah, the go-karts, the thing I remember. Yeah. I remember that this is just a sort of a, a glimpse into my childhood. Going out, because we were on holiday. It was like, I used to holiday down to Devon. And, oh, uh, God damn it. 
where we went to a place that had like an indoor go karting <gasps> section, nice. and cool. it was like, yeah, but that's not as cool as my Aliens Queen face hugger toy for children that I've got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a special child. Yeah. Well, the nineties were a special time where yeah. you could sell things like that to children. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we've spoken before, haven't we, about the, um, the RoboCop glorious. action figures and things. Uh, mm. Yeah. Completely for children. That's, that's the difference between uh, back in the day and, um, uh, you know, modern times is that you feel as though action figures are specifically geared up, geared towards um, our age, <laughs> you mm. know, that, that, that grew up with the action figures and never grew out of them. And it's almost as though kids these days aren't allowed the same, <laughs> you know. Well, they would be interested <laughs> anyway. Uh, you're not supposed to take them out of the boxes and that kind of thing. But also just the, um, you know, you'd never have, for instance, a, I'm just trying to think of something uh, horrific, scream action figure aimed at children, <laughs> shall we say, which is, it's not a, a one-to-one equivalency, but it's, it's similar when you look at, Robocop was an 18, and you still had action figures for Robocop. Um, That's true. Although I suppose we did have, when we got into the 2000s, we had um, McFarlane's toys Missing and his child. movie Maniacs. All right. And that's where you brought out like your Brundleflies, your Freddy Kruegers, your, your ghost-faced um, ghost killers. Yeah. But they were, again, toys designed for adult collectors of exactly. action figures rather than, you know, toys. Exactly. I'm missing a child here. This is uh, this is deeply disturbing. Don't worry, Michael will f- be able to sniff it out eventually. <laughs> um, what? Oh, I was going to say, what was the last action figure you bought? But you displayed it for us not too long ago, didn't you? It was the uh, uh, Megatron and, and all that kind of thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. I got my uh, hot rod the other week as well. So um, I think he was the last one I bought. I bought him alongside the the Bumblebee version of Soundwave who is still boxed up because I've got nowhere to put him in my room at the moment. But um, yeah, so it's been, what, three weeks since I bought a toy? Having withdrawals? Uh, Maybe, but I have (laughs) bought a lot of Disney Blu-rays, so (laughs) there's a a trade-off. Yeah. (laughs) God, I wonder why I'm single sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we had a uh, a lecture today. Like, it, well, it ran all day. It was three different lectures from the one module, and it was all about uh, the whole module is employability. So you know how to get a job in <laughs> think... NHS and social work side of things. Employability and, um, slash dateability. Yeah, exactly. And just showing how adult I am. I had it on low volume in the background while I played Final Fantasy Remake. <laughs> Not paying a single word of attention to it because I figured, well, I've worked in the past. I know how to apply for jobs. I'm not some fresh-faced 20-something new into the job market. It's just I'll just turn up with my usual swagger and blag my way into the job. That's usually how it works. Mm. Yeah. Probably won't work for me now, but, you know. (laughs) Well, that's what happens as you get older, isn't it? The charms wear off. Fresh-facedness isn't as appealing. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. They just go, ooh, you look remarkably young for a man in his 30s. (laughs) That that sounds a dangerous combination. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you just, I mean, you know, you just talk about how you were listening to Frozen in the car and, uh, you know, no one that listens to Frozen in the car can be uh, a bad person. Exactly. Yeah. It's like all my right. German tattoos. Yeah. yeah um, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where to go no, from I think that. About it. I really should have been listening into those lectures earlier. But the moment they said, we won't be talking about the assignment. We'll save that for next week. It's like, mute. <laughs> mute at the PlayStation. Let's try and get invested once again into the terrible terrible world of final fantasy 7 <laughs> i i'm looking forward to uh, hearing how that goes if you manage to stick with it through to the end i'm i'm doing my best <laughs> i'm trying god help me I, i'm really trying you know it helps to have something going in the background like a moonwalker commentary hmm. uh, but um i i've tried to to listen to the characters but there's only so many cut scenes of inane innocuous babble that you can listen to where you're going the story isn't being progressed, and I don't find any of these characters charming. So why am I sitting here for another three-minute-long cutscene? Why do you need charming characters when you've got boobs? 
well, that's true, but they won't take them out. They want to. <laughs> they, are, they are desperate to flap out those yams and jam them into Cloud's face. But he's got a serious case of the not gaze for Sephiroth. And it's just, it's really frustrating, particularly when you told me that there's no chance in hell that he's going to get fucked throughout the entire game. And it's like, ah, oh! <laughs> these three beautiful women are literally throwing themselves at him. And he's just like, ugh, girls, they're so weird. Oh, I'm so brooding and dark. <laughs> Why don't people understand the real me? And it's just, shut up, Cloud, shut up, <laughs> you insufferable prick. Oh, I, it, it doesn't help either that, you know, they're, they're looking, well, I say, uh, is it Sephira, the, the evil corporation, Shimra? Sh Shimra. Uh, Shimra, yeah. Shinra. They're, they're looking for these elite Shinra. mercenaries that have now taken out two of their reactor cores. And it's like, look for the big black guy with the machine gun arm. The women <laughs> that is wearing half a knight's, you know, armor plating. And the guy with spiky hair that's always got a broadsword the size of a bus on his back. You know, that guy over there. He, he's right over there. He's that guy. He's the guy you're looking for. Oh, no, you've disappeared off again. Okay, fair enough. And it's just, it's that on repeat. These people are, are so obvious to spot out of a crowd of very bland-looking um, NPCs. And no one in Shimra is able to pick them out of a lineup. It's infuriatingly anime. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. As, as I said, I've... Only got halfway through the original. Uh, in fact, I think we spoke about it on the uh, podcast last year. Yeah, about a year ago, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was, it was yeah. about the time you were playing Monster Hunter, watching Monster Hunter. Yes, yeah, I, th I think you're right. Yeah, mm. and um, yeah, it, it makes more sense in the uh, in, in the in the uh, retro pixel art graphical styles. Um, that well, not pixel art, but you know that way that way mm. more more not as realistic as uh, the retro grade. Right? Yeah, the retro. Thank you, and it, it makes more sense. Because um, obviously people can blend in, but um, yeah, I, I, I do take what you mean. But I'm I'm enjoying the combat enough when it's not being obtuse. Y you know, obviously, like certain enemies will be weak against certain buffs and spells and and elemental types or types of attack. Mm. But don't give me a side quest with er Aerith. Aerith. Yeah. Eris. Don't Eris. give me a side Eris. quest with Eris, who only has ranged mage attacks against enemies that have shields that protect them from physical damage from my broadsword and can't be harmed by magic. Mm. And then make me fight three of them at once. That's just that's just bad game design. Mm. Uh, and it seems to be throwing out quite a few of those at the moment. So my, my determination to avoid the plot by doing the side quests is now being severely <laughs> hampered by the fact the side quests are bollocks. So it's now forcing <laughs> me to play the story. It's it's deeply frustrating, but I'll play it for a couple of hours and you're like, you know what, I'm actually starting to enjoy this. Ah, fuck! <laughs> Hit another wall, turn it off, go back to it tomorrow. And it's it's that. Every time I, it tricks me into thinking I'm starting to enjoy it, I realise I've been playing this for too long and have to turn it off. <laughs> I, I just I just think that we're uh, we're contrarians too much because everyone else absolutely loves the game, so I, yeah. I I don't know don't know what it is don't know what it is. I think it's just case of nostalgia. Like if you grew up with it, it makes perfect sense. Like I I love Crash Bandicoot, absolutely yeah. love it. The game is an absolute yeah. nightmare to play, but I've I've got nostalgia with it. But I don't know it. I given how impenetrable the story is and how melodramatic everything is, it seems the kind of thing that I can't imagine. I can't see how a mass audience was won over by it when, you know, a vast majority of people don't like anime, mm. yet a vast majority of PlayStation owners love Final Fantasy VII, and they'll still champion how good the game is now, and then denounce animes, and it's 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 a bizarre one to me, it really is. Mm. Nostalgia plays a big component of it, but I just don't understand how it got its hooks into so many people at the time that there would be such a... It's like Nintendo, you know, like there's so much Nintendo awareness. Yeah. It's just baked into culture. And Final Fantasy VII is among that where everybody knows of Final Fantasy VII, even those that haven't played it. Mm. And then you play it and go, but why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the, uh, the the Spider Cave, of course, by the way. From, of course, from, from Bugs Milwaukee. and Drugs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 oh. 
it's <laughs> going to become legendary. In the... I think it's my favourite villain speech of all time. <laughs> what, what does he say? It's something like, I got... I got drugs. I got Europe. I got the West Coast. I got the East Coast. You need to get out there. Stop those kids doing prayer in schools. I need you in the playgrounds getting all the kids on drugs. All the kids in America on drugs. And they'll all know it was me. My name. Mr. Big. Mr. Leno. <laughs> That's really impressive. How the hell did you? That's really good. That must have been pretty much spot on. Well, it's not exactly deep, um, but it's one of those things like I'm, I can remember the broad beats of it because it's just yeah. such wonderful nonsense. Drugs in school, uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> no, yeah, that's. I, I want that to be. I want you to fob off more of your uh, of your uh, studying and uh, and learn the and learn the Mr. Big speech for next week. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I could probably work it into my final OT presentation. Oh, please do. <laughs> have I told you my idea for, for that? No, you haven't. We have to take an area of, well, just an area where there's a need for occupational therapists that hasn't yet been developed so we can fill a niche. Okay. And my idea, and it started as a joke, but now I'm, I'm very sincerely invested in this. It's, it's all about the need for occupational therapists when we have off-world colonies on Mars. <laughs> and the working title which sparked it all off was To Infin OT and Beyond. And then from that, it sprung a case of, wait a minute, there's a nugget in this. Because there's a need for OTs for people working abroad. Those that have, like, separation from family for long durations. Um, those that work grueling physical menial tasks those that are working in hazardous environments and it's like this is just mars colonization mm. i'm pretty sure I'm, I'm quite tempted to try and get a hold of someone at nasa and just ask them you know like is there any provision for what you can do about occupational therapists in the future see if i can get a quote <laughs> but <laughs> yeah this is my presentation put you on a retainer for the next hundred years until they make yeah. it uh do a... Pass it on to the son that I never have, and instead they'll be like, "Damn, he'll never have a, a son to pass on the legacy to." I know. We'll just put him in the cloning program. <laughs> All I ask for is one perfect clone, unaltered, to call a son. I was going to say that's the thing about clones, which I feel. Um, have we ever had this conversation before? I feel as though we, we must have done. I don't think on the show about Gwen Stacy. Yes, it, had this conversation. Frust yeah. frustrates the hell out of me. That people <laughs> people react to clones as if they're the actual person and they're not. Mm. It's a it's a it's a different person, with you know, uh, in in the case of the uh, Ultimate Spider-Man Gwen Gwen Stacy, like she dies, she was dead, yes. and yet because a clone comes along, they react as if she's alive and she's not. You, you can mm -hmm. still feel the, um, uh, you know the the heartbreak of that person being dead, and they just gloss over it. Infuriating. Yep. It's the uh, almost the Armand Tanzarian effect. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh no, we said it's fine, so everything goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. Back to Norman. As, uh, back to Norman. As, back to uh, the hypothetical. If you had a mini hit, uh, clone of Hitler, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must have listened to that hypothetical debate about uh, fifty times over now, and it never stops being funny. Um, I can only watch it with the uh, animated. Um, I forget who did. Was it Brandon Turner or something that did the animated? Um, I don't know if you've seen that. It's, it's I, absolutely I, I've definitely seen it, but it's been a while because I've listened to it in so many different contexts at this yeah. point. I can't remember which is the real one anymore. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I forgot how many. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this and, uh, uh, you know, just completely impervious to pain, which Michael Jackson was. Um, <laughs> Only because of all the drugs that he was on. <laughs> because of all the drugs. <laughs> the, con <laughs> the constant moonwalking. Um, <laughs> it's just like, come on, hurry up. How many more children have you lost? Although I suppose he does <laughs> just kind of leave them to to do what they want after a while, doesn't he? That was, that was his yeah, stick. Yeah. So, uh, Would the movie have been improved with zombies in it? Uh, treading on old ground. That wasn't something Michael Jackson did. Uh, no, he preferred to try tread in uh, younger waters. That that doesn't even that doesn't even make sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm sticking by it. <laughs> oh, poor Michael Jackson. Um, right. What 
how many other levels have we got after this one? We've got... Uh, it's only three levels, isn't it? Isn't no, it, it's... Uh, Club 30, then the parking lot, then this. Um, uh, the Mr. Big Arena? Um, perhaps. What did we get to last time? Did we finish on this one last time? Yeah, we played this for what felt like um, three hours and couldn't quite get out of spider caves. Right, okay. Um, but we have no excuses now because we've got uh, nigh invulnerability. Absolutely. Yep. Um, although I remember we struggled to find the last two kids, didn't we? So this is but the actually, situation that we're. Yeah, that in. May, may have been it. I think it was a case of we just we couldn't find the kid, and it was getting so frustrating uh, yeah. that you just gave up. Well, balls. We shall try anyway. <laughs> Endeavor onward. Endeavor. Are we still planning on tackling the um, top two hundred and fifty IMDb's today? Oh crap! I completely forgot about that. Um. We might have to save that for next week now because I've overrun <laughs> by by <laughs> thinking that we can do this as well. Um, hmm. Do you want to do? Uh, no, I'm not. Have you? Where are you uh, in dark? Have you finished uh, season two? Dark? Oh, oh yeah, good point. No, I've I've just an episode six of eight, um, so I'm going to try and finish. It's only eight episode uh, eight episodes a season, isn't it? Yeah, so it is, I yeah. shall endeavour to get it done before Saturday evening. Um, but uh, yes, never have I been more thrilled to, to watch a boy make out with his aunt or cheering, <laughs> enthusiastically cheering. Spoilers. Like, Yay. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, but uh, yeah, so there could be, I could be talking about anybody. There, there's your warning. And uh, we'll do, I mean, do you want to have a bit of a chat into where you've got to up to now? Or do you want to save it until yeah. the end of the... This, this was a fascinating episode. Episode six, where uh, we'll call it uh, Jonas Comes Home. And there's so many, many good things about this episode. It's it's so nice to flash back to the 20th of June before it all went tits up. Mm. To see the characters and the town when it was in place of happiness. Mm. Especially because season two has been oppressive. Even for season one of Dark yes. was fairly oppressive. But season two really beats you over the head with it. So just for one episode where we can go, oh, the calm before the storm. Well, literally the calm before the storm. The The episode ends with a, a storm raining down upon the town. Um, there is some phenomenal stuff in there um, and keeps playing with the convention of, of time travel and causality loops and time locks and predestination. And it's, it's just doing a really good job of just making sure that all those... I'm pretty sure we're at a point where all the I's are dotted and season three is going to be where the T's are all crossed. Mm. That's a, I, that is a really good way of, uh, of looking at it, yeah. Because mm. uh, there, there's stuff that happens in this episode where it's like, oh, of course, I hadn't even thought about that. But clearly you've, you've either sort of worked it in or you realised that this needed tying up back when you were plotting this whole thing. So it's so nice just these gaps I wasn't even aware were like potential plot holes to now start be uh, are now starting to be plugged in. Yeah. Yeah, as as I said to you, I think I said to you before you even started. I said, you know, it will get to the end of the show and you'll just be stunned at mm -hmm. the way that they tie up every single loose end. You might you might stop and think, "Well, hang on, does that?" And then you'll go, "Oh yeah, cuz such and such." And it's it's masterful. It is as a <laughs> You know, I, I just going back and listen to uh, to one of the prior episodes for rather than me going on and on again and saying how fantastic it is, but mm. it really is um, the way they uh, weave this tapestry. Mm. I'm blown away by it. Watching watching it over again, I, I think I said that to you before, didn't I? I? Can't remember if I said it on here or if I texted you. Um, watching it through a second time, you appreciate it even more than mm. than the first time. It's it's astonishing and. Um, I, yeah, I it was one of the reasons why I, I wanted to get you to to watch it because I knew that when things start to click into gear, I don't think there's anything else I've ever seen like it. Um, yes, this is what Lost wished it was doing. Yeah, um, and um, it it was all you know pre written as well, um, which is another thing which which makes this uh, you know allows them to to create such a confident, uh, well structured piece is because. They didn't just make it up on the fly and think, "Oh, let's let's do another season." It's it's. They started from the beginning. They must have had their Charlie Day whiteboard out, and they they just <laughs> they just went for it. And uh, it's unbelievable. 
absolutely unbelievable. So um, it's been a while since I did season two. I, I stopped after I finished um, uh, the uh, se uh, episode eight of season two because I figured I wanted to stay more in line with where you are. Um, but that was a while ago. So just r so I know the episode you mean um, where you have the flashbacks and it's kind of it's a bit of an origin story for like Hannah and um, um, uh, what's his face? Um, Ulrich. Ulrich, yeah, thank you. Um, when they get their romance kicked off, um, which, yeah, she's so, oh, God. <laughs> Hannah's just like, oh, she's fantastic. And it's a shame Absolutely because Ka actually seeing Catherine when she was happy, is it Kathleen? Cause there's, uh, there's Katerina. Katerina. Seeing her happy. Yeah. It's just like, oh. You can see why her and Ulrich had so many children because she just seems like a, just so much fun when she's mm. had a few drinks in her and and actually seeing how much she she mothered for Mikel. yeah it, you know it's Mikkel. all very much like oh well of course she's uh, you know grieving for her son she's she's his mum but you don't realize how little interaction we actually had of the two of them outside exactly. his initial magic scene yes. in the first episode until we we see his uh <laughs> needing to be put to bed because of his rubella Ah, yes. it's good stuff. And what what else do we have that's good in that episode? Um, I so I'm... aunt's boobs. Uh, <laughs> she looks phenomenal in that uh, swimsuit coming out of the lake. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, let's. I, that was that's one of my favourite scenes I think from the entire mm. show, and uh, I thought it was really powerful at the time watching it. And you know, without wanting to sound like a broken record, second time when you realise everything that they put into um, into building up everything so far. It, it means so much more that uh, that scene and you know just everything Jonas goes through and his story up to that point and and um, just yeah everything going forward actually within within that that timeline uh, it's it really brings everything about their relationship um, full circle and mm. uh, I, I there's just something about I like the idea that um, future Jonas comes back and commits himself to something that that past Jonas has nothing about and it's <laughs> it's handled so seamlessly so mm. so that it it makes sense and it allows their relationship to progress um that that affects the first episode and then we think back yes. to, to to the first episode and and you, you think back to Jonas's expression when he sees Martha with um with Bartosh and you know that is literally in one of the first scenes of the film, and it, we, we're kind of lost when we see that because it's like, oh, were these two together? And suddenly we have a context. Two seasons later, yeah, it's what did brilliant. the lake over the summer? Yes, <laughs> it only took two seasons to get there. Yeah, well, it's so 18, 16 episodes, but ah, oh, it's it's masterfully done, and it's it's so well written. In in the fact, it's it's mainly the actors. We praise the actors prior, but. The look on on Martha's face, you know, you, just the puppy love in her eyes mm. is just—it's so compellingly real. Um, and uh, yeah, you utterly believe that she's completely in love with Jonas, which is such, just so sweet. All yeah, things considered. Um, yeah. Oh, I love it. It's great. It's, it was a really good episode, and I'm I'm dreading what comes next because <laughs> obviously we're sort of one day away from the apocalypse at this point, and it's yes. like, oh, it's all going to come crashing down. <laughs> <laughs> we have this one episode of happiness. Um, yeah, you'll you'll feel a lot of feelings um, going into the season finale for certain, um, and yeah, I I think season three goes into a place I certainly wasn't expecting. And uh, I, I said to you the other day, you know, you you might people at the time. I remember reading uh, things saying, "Oh my, they've they've totally jumped the shark with this." I don't know if I can get on board with what they're doing. And season three, despite the fact that it goes somewhere different, really, it just wraps it up better than I ever imagined it could. And maybe you might think differently, um, but um, I I just think season three is is just somehow improves on on everything that's uh this that we already get um Ooh, wow yeah. that is a bold claim yeah i mean again i might be wrong um you might not dig it as much as i did but i was so invested come the end of uh come the end of season three um that i wasn't expecting even though i'd, I'd enjoyed the first season too much uh, so much 
Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of other other bits that you'll have come to because there's so many great, um, like Ulrich in the. Have you cut? Uh, I, I'm. I'm I, I, it's like I'm. I'm almost has has, Ulrich has, met back up with Mikel. Has that happened? Yes, and he's been carted away. How good is oh, that? Oh, I just wanted them to be happy. Yeah. He's waited 33 years for this, and he gets so close. But Mikel doesn't even put up a fight. That's what irritated me about it. His dad is being bundled away by the cops, and Mikel doesn't say a word. I think Mikkel's... Well, I mean, he's... he's. Um, I think he's just trained to be docile at that point, because um, his um, surrogate mom, I forget her name, she's a nurse, has obviously mm. been drugging him. And I think that uh. he's just become uh, docile to a lot of things. And, you know, that's almost what she's trained him to be like. It's just emotionally vacant, which which carries on through, obviously, to how Mikkel, Mikkel is in the um, in the future. Um, you know, with Hannah and with Jonas and things, he's, mm. you, you know, he, he doesn't seem quite there. Um, did you get that scene in the future? Have you seen that bit yet? Uh, when uh, or in the present, I should say, in, in the present day, uh, on the twentieth of June. Um, it's it's Jonas and Mickle. Yeah. 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 yeah where they're together in the house having yes. a conversation. Yeah. Yes. That is really powerful. That is mm. that is such a powerful moment. I think. Um, I loved it. Tell. I could see where it was going. That was the shame of it. And it's like, yeah. ah, don't you know, Jonas, that you're playing into, you are creating the time loop that he now has to go off and do this. Yes. Uh, but, but of course, he's just trying to, he's just trying to save his dad in yeah. the way he knows how. But it's like, don't you understand? But by doing this, you've now put the idea in his head, and of course he's going to do it because he wants to save you. And it's, a, it's a. Oh, I love it. That is... The fact that you can't stop the past from happening because it it will wipe Jonas off the map. Exactly. And that's the last thing that Mikkel wants. Exactly. And it's one of my favourite things about the show is how it (laughs) just expertly, expertly takes characters that set out to stop the, the past from happening, but just through, you know, events that feel really organic. It it doesn't feel as though they're forced. Events transpire as they did. Because of course they did. You can't stop. You stop. You can't stop the flow of time. And it's just watching this amazing sequence of events where, where the past happens as it should. Just you know, and people changing their minds and and uh, and, and realizations and things. It's oh, it's so so good, and everything just <laughs> flows so smoothly. Um, yeah, it's 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 next level, next level uh, writing in, in every respect. I can't get over it. I really can't. No, it's very, very well recommended. I'm, I'm looking forward to pressing on with it. Good, good. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I won't say anything else because um, I, I don't want to. I, I am really excited for you to kind of, well, get to the end of season two because, because that's a, a big, um, you know, conversation starter as you can imagine. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then, and then onward from there. Any other? moments from season two because there are loads it's like every every half an episode is like a a, a season um season finale of lost i found yeah that's that's <laughs> very true yeah every new revelation well it helps when you're working in four different time zones doesn't it yeah each one with compelling and interesting characters where each thing they do is gonna dramatically impact upon the plot and it feels like it should be the credit should roll at this moment it's like no oh, no we still got 40 minutes left of the episode yeah um I'm just trying to think, really. Um, I mean, the um, uh, um, the ah, um, the storyline of uh, Tildman and and his daughter, oh, yeah. and uh, and all that is. I think it's been about an episode. It's been a week since I last watched it, so I'm trying to remember when it would have been. So it feels like longer in the series, but it was probably only the previous episode. But uh, yeah, finding out that Tildman has uh, has cancer and how that's impacting on things as well, mm. and just. The poor man. Just, I, I love the fact that his daughter, you know, from from the future, um, it comes back to tell him in the past that he's a nice man that doesn't deserve anything that's happened throughout his entire life. And it's like it's so true. He mm. doesn't. He doesn't deserve any of that. It's not his fault that he's a man completely out of his depth for the level for the magnitude of the the criminal investigation that he's trying to solve. No one could have put this together. Yeah. And and it all just keeps falling on his shoulders, and it's just like, oh no. They do a good job of making him 
uh, I mean, I might be wrong, but my interpretation was that they initially, when you when you come to meet him, they, they, they kind of paint him as the villain almost because of what he does to Ulrich. And you think, oh, here's this kind of stoic, uptight, you know, police officer type. Man. Yeah. Um, and then, they, as you say, they shift him. In, he becomes so uh, such a sympathetic character that, that you feel for, arguably more than any other characters, despite all the horribleness that's happening to them. You know, he's a guy where you really feel as though he's just he, he's just been caught up in something he doesn't understand. Mm. Um, and yeah, uh, um, Tiedelman is is I forget his first name, um, but um, yeah, he is. He, he he really comes out of it in um, the fifties and the eighties as, as just a character that you find yourself enjoying um, seeing. <laughs> I think yeah, when, when he when he comes he's desperately trying to put all the clues together, he's just getting them all in the wrong order. Yeah. Um, where's this monkey telling me? Ah, oh, there we go. Not some, not something I've said before. Where's this monkey pointing down me to go? that door? Yeah, I've got it now. Oh. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, marvelous stuff. Just trying to think, what else? Um, I like the fact that we're probably never going to find out, nor should we. How I'm going to butcher the names on terrible names. Woolgart, the the detective. Mm. How he lost his eye. <laughs> uh, I like that that's never been addressed and when it comes close to being addressed there's a, a potential accident that prevents him from going any further into the details it's like yes don't tell us what happened with that it's just one of those nice we're being dropped into the middle of his story why would he be recounting this information the whole town already knows what happened he doesn't have to tell it to us just for our knowledge it's it's the it's the only time I feel in the entire show where it has a sense of humor about itself mm. um, that is very meta. And um, yes, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, I, I, uh, it, it is it's so good. They, they play it just perfectly. Um, yeah. Um, what, what, what do you think of the, uh, the new police inspector? Um, I've forgotten his name. Uh, he's probably the only character that I've not taken to. I... Mainly because he's trying to root out the truth. And it's like, oh, you're an outsider in all yes. of this. Yeah, it's amazing I, how quickly you root yourself in the townspeople and then the moment someone from the outer world comes interfering in their business, it's like, no, you have no right in all of this. I think, yeah, I think that's purposely how they portray him, where you feel as though he's an outsider who's a threat to um, the events that, you know, are transpiring because that's, that's you know, even watching it again, that's still the emotions that I have towards him <laughs> is he, he feels like a sore thumb. Just interacting yeah, he's an with loper. Yeah. Um again, just just fascinating how they managed to um instill that feeling. Uh where you you, you kind of taking the sides of, of of the people that you know, even if perhaps even if you don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> when you're taking Hannah's side over anything. <laughs> <laughs> um well, I mean Alexander, really. Um, because I, I don't feel as though Alexander's even necessarily a, a character that we've been that we see enough to be invested in. Um you know, the, the uh, head of the power plant? Head of the power plant, mm. yeah. I mean, we know enough about him now, not obviously uh, yeah. his origin at this point, but we've seen how he's at least weaseled his way into the position of power, but mm. his love for his wife is is evident, you know, yeah. above all else. His love for his family is there, um, and that makes him compelling, even yeah. if he's a sort of odious toad to, to everyone else. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think Bartok's uh, the only one I've not really got much sympathy for, and I realise it's sort of out of his control. You know, the his best friend sort of betrayed him. His girlfriend dumped him for his best friend. He's he's seen too many things in the future, and that's influencing how he can behave in the past. Mm. Um, his mother's obviously dying of cancer. His whole life is falling apart around him. But uh, he's he's just one ca character I don't really have much investment in whenever he's on screen, apart from how he's going to sort of play off against Jonah or or I'm going to say Martha. Yeah, um, Martha, yeah. Martha, yeah. Yeah, he does get a bit of a uh, short end of the stick. Um, um, in, uh, yes, in, 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 in season two. Uh, but I, at the same time, it takes its time with certain characters. And to be honest, I can't actually re remember much of his arc in season three. But um, certainly if you go back and watch season one, Mm. you'll be very aware of how little there is of Martha 
and perhaps even the beginning of season two as well, to come to think of it. Yeah, Martha's um, quite unlikable in season one. Yeah. Because all she ever does is snap on her mother. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's interesting how they keep certain characters for certain times, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, and uh, they, they don't tell you too much until, you know, they're relevant. Um, and... I mean that, that's not that's not like um, leading towards anything. As I say, I honestly can't remember Bartosh's <laughs> role in season three. He might not have one at all. Um, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 really fascinating. Mm. Um, well, I feel the same way about oh, what's Martha's okay. brother? It's a name like Mor Morgana. Um, it is God. What is his name? It begins with M, doesn't it? It is Ma Macintosh Magnus. Now. Magnus. Magnus. Yes. Magnus. How could I forget? Yeah, they've they've hinted at the cliffhanger of, of episode six that Magnus is going to be like the main character for episode seven, and mm. it's the, the POV. So we've not really had much about Magnus or the police woman's kids. Obviously, we've seen where her deaf and dumb daughter sort of ends up in the future, um, but uh, her young, frequently naked older daughter. <laughs> you can tell the things that I really focus on in this show. Um, <laughs> her, her older daughter, she's there as is magnus but they've not really been that impactful on anything yet so i'm i'll be interested to see how that starts tying up because mm. they sort of feel like just bit players in the in the wider tapestry that's that's weaving around everyone at the moment yeah yeah um yes i i had uh, I, I take it um um uh you have an, an interest in um i've forgotten the name now um yeah, it's redhead, isn't it? There's just so many characters. Uh, yeah, mainly because she's a, a snarky redhead. Yes. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I my, my heart is truly lying with Martha at the moment. Oh, which that's is, interesting. Oh, yeah, she's just so lovable. Um, yeah, and, and, and that's interesting. I, I kind of held off from saying... I mean, I, I, I grew to be fond of Martha as well, which is strange because, again, you watch the first season and she's so unlikable. She is not... <laughs> Playing annoying. off these two best friends. Yeah, she's she's mm. just constantly so selfish and, and stuck up and... Melodramatic. Melodramatic, exactly. And you can see it... Um, obviously, she's she's lost her brother and things and all that kind of stuff, but um, she she's not an empathetic type she's not um she she struggles to get out, out of her own head i think a bit and uh yeah I, i'm not going to say anything more about martha um uh but yeah no she, she 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 all of the characters are just so complex and interesting that um you you just find yourself enamored with them and i can say that about every single one of them um and, and, and where they eventually go. There's, there's not one character that I feel is left behind and done an injustice, uh, oh, which marvelous. is just not something that you, that happens, you know? No. Um, that never happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, final um, episode, uh, episode level of this. Um, you'll be delighted Ooh. to know this is the um, Mr. Big's uh, secret hideout, I suppose. I don't know. I mean, we don't know what city um, this takes place in, but I just kind of figured Los Angeles for some reason. I, uh, Attila? Strange that... What, with um, all the crystals? Well, perhaps. Um, uh, yeah. Either way. We, we actually did get past the zombie level, because I remember the... Um, what do you call them? The laser cannons. Yeah. Just pissing you right off. So, yeah, we did get further than I remembered. Yeah, I, I realised that as we got to it. Um, we just didn't get to the Wumper crystals. Yeah, I mean... It, it, these levels are just ridiculous. Um, I'm so happy that I put on the the uh, the uh, invincibility because this would not have been a fun time. I don't understand. It's not like you can even master the timing of something like this. It's all just random. Mm. Yep, this is how we played video games uh, 30 years ago. Christ. Um <laughs> The the video, they, they weren't they weren't fun <laughs> no no they weren't <laughs> they were compelling and challengingly addictive mm. but you certainly could not say you were having fun while doing it <laughs> it was it was a matter of you'd spent a lot of money it was the only game you were going to play in six months and so you just played it incessantly and the sunk cost fallacy exactly you tried to get your money's worth out of it Oh, here we go. Yay. He's turning into a robot. This is oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is what we've been waiting for. There he goes. Whoo. All I can hear is the Pokemon music, you know, the evolution. 
dun, 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 dun. There we go. Look at that. It's a um, Mecha Jackson tra- transform transformation almost as good as the movie itself. Uh, what else can he do? <laughs> There's well, it didn't take half an hour, unlike the movie version. <laughs> Gradually, his face exploding. and um, I can't get over just the, the amount of effort they went to, to create Mecha Michael Jackson and to make it look like it wasn't a oh, pleasant experience. It's not like, yes, yes I am now becoming ultra-powerful. It's like, Jesus! Ah, ah, it burns! Ah, my bones! <laughs> ah, ah. No one told me it would hurt this much. <laughs> he is. He's constantly screaming. <laughs> Um, ah, there we go. That was easier than I remember. I mean, the amazing thing as well, let's, uh, I'm just gonna, you know, big myself up a bit. Congratulations, you defeated all of Mr. Big's henchmen. You've escaped from the traps Mr. Big set for you. You rescued all of the children Mr. Big kidnapped. Now it's time for the final challenge. You versus Mr. Big. Mm. With three exclamation marks. <clears throat> and as a kid, I uh, got to this stage a couple of times, but never defeated Mr. Big. So uh, I've cheated my way this far, and I'm going to do it cheating. <laughs> Cheat. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, screw it. Um, I don't care. <laughs> I can't wait to see... Oh, wow, look at that. At the... I can't wait to see the epic final cutscene. You see, this it's just difficult, because I don't feel as though I have any control over... I'm just literally firing. I've got, I've got no, I've got no control yeah, over where the thing's aiming at anything. all. Yeah, it's, it's um. Oh God, no! I'm losing. Oh, you uh, can actually die. Oh I shit! I can actually die. It's not. Oh. There yeah, it is. Do you remember me there telling you around right about Christmas how I... the Incredibles Lego Trophy Platinum is probably harder than Dark Souls? Yes. This is the kind of stuff you have to do when you it's, it's like fall through the debris without getting hit by anything. Oh, wait, shit. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a safe state. I'm going to cheat even further. Uh, <gasps> further s- cheats. Uh, safe state as... You become Mr. Big. Uh, no, it, it just means it's like a um, an emulator thing whereby um you can pause it at this moment and then if you die rather than playing playing the game again you can just come back to this moment it's it's very useful nice. um and yeah oh god damn it i thought i had it and it's argh, i don't <laughs> look this is stupid this is That's so stupid nonsense this is ridiculous uh can you imagine spending hours of your life trying to get to this stage thinking oh god yes i've finally done it i finally um finally conquered all of the stupidness that this game has to offer and then just so unfair <laughs> this is so We've got a whole new level of stupid to throw at you right so i'm gonna just press down and see oh okay sorry matt you were gonna say something before i uh, uh i can't went off on it. god damn it uh oh yeah just but uh, what you're seeing on screen is sort of visual representation of fall through the air without hitting any debris oh yeah just that easy isn't it <laughs> It's just visual clutter flying at you, and you can't tell which way's up. From the Looks uh, like the Imperial Death Star destroyers. That the um, uh, 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 what's it called? Incredibles game. Yeah. Yeah. God damn it! This Two is trophies so away from platinuming that, and they're oh, they're so fiddly and arbitrary. Hmm. Um. Well, I'm not going to see this through. I feel as though we Damn might need shame. to. But you've gotten further than you have in the last 25 years? Um, Probably 30. 25, 30 years-ish. Well, you yeah. would have been four roundabout when you played this otherwise, wouldn't you? Six? It was released in 1990, I think, this game. And I got it when it's... it came out, more or less. Um, So I won't have played it past... 1990, yeah, maybe eight years old or something. Oh, you would have thought they'd really sit alongside the movie in 88. Um, the, things didn't work that way back then, I guess. I think the... Oh, that's not. When was... I think the E.T. game came out like a couple of years after E.T. I mean, I might be wrong, but... Um... <laughs> Still riding that hype train. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, speaking of things coming out far too late to ride the hype train, apparently the first 12 minutes of Avatar 2, or at least 12 random minutes of Avatar 2 have been completed... And they're, they're trying to drum up interest now with uh, Zoe Saldana saying, oh, it made me so emotional and audiences have no idea for the emotional roller coaster they're in store for. And it's like, yeah, you're about 12 years too late for any of that. Oh, 
my god. <laughs> um, yeah. Is that how long it came out ago, the first one? 2009. That's mad. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, even, even the most hardcore of uh, fans has got to be entirely, um, you know, losing all interest at this point. Yeah, it, this is now sort of the Duke Nukem forever of movies. Yeah. I'm actually doing all right. I don't want to... Mind you, know. how long did it take for End of Evangelion... Not End of Evangelion, Rebuild of Evangelion to finish? That was a decade, wasn't it? <gasps> I did it! Oh my God, I did it! Oh my God, well yes. done! I don't you know how. I did it. Yes. I don't... Well done, Shinji. You Thank did you. it. Thank you. I'm going to cry. Incoming Congre message. No! <laughs> Congratulations. Wow. Oh, wow. basking it, Dan. You've earned it. Thank you. 30 years in the making. And I didn't even cheat for the final uh, for the final bit as well. Yes, look at that. Wow. You dance, kid, you dance. Uh, grab that crotch. <laughs> um, plan assistant, Captain Elf. Captain Designer, Doi Doi. Programmer, Ecus Mount Book. Ecus Mount Book. This is just nonsense. This is gibberish. <laughs> This uh, reads like the cast list of the upcoming Netflix Resident Evil series. Yeah, game design by Michael Jackson. There you go. Yeah, it makes far more sense than the movie. It, it, it does, it does. It has a uh, logical beginning, middle, and end. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm absolutely chuffed to bits that um, that I managed to do that on this stream. I feel that was mm. worthwhile time spent. And, you know, it was like an hour. So, uh, right, onward to... Um, Takeshi's Castle. And I can actually have a proper conversation. Hooray! Right. <laughs> now that we've exhausted all topics. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we'll leave the IMDb conversation to next week, so that'll be a good one. Um, there was a... Oh, I know. I know what we had to talk about. We're going to um, in induct our first song into the uh, Charisma Vacuum Media Hall of Ooh. Fame. This is just something that uh, I cooked up the other day as I was listening to songs from my youth, or kind of the early 2000s, I should say. Uh, radio songs, just, you know, songs that I, I would never really listen to. Um, if it, you know, I, I wouldn't buy it on a CD, but just stuff that came on the radio and mm. probably was indifferent about at the time, but just from nostalgic purposes. Suddenly sounds like the best music ever. Um and it was a it was it was a really good time, and uh, it got me thinking. And I thought, you know what, we should just have. Uh, uh, I'll I'll submit a song, and you can, and we'll just keep doing that because there are, it, you know, not a serious thing by any stretch. I'm not going to be putting just Beatles, music discussion. Beatles or Led Zeppelin in, into this, but just something. How to define it? Something. Um, music so that was informative to our. Childhood and early teen years. Well, not even not even that way, but just something that is. Um, I was thinking it through and thinking just just a song that in some way is undeniable, as ambiguous a word as that sounds. It is a song. Like, what is love? Uh, Where just everyone is like, oh yeah, that song. Well, not even that, but just like yes, that is a song. It it had an influence. It had an impact, and it's <laughs> you know if it's a comedic way, then so be it or if it's a, a way that makes you know just just um makes you feel something one way or another yeah um, like better off alone stuff like that uh sure and so <laughs> with that in mind i had two songs that i wanted that, that i was considering um a kind of serious ish one and a uh kind of not so serious ish one but still one that is very important to uh to you and i in this channel and so I figured that, you know what, I'm going to have to go for that one. I'm going to have to go for the second one. So the <clears throat> premier inductee into the Charisma Vacuum Media Music Single Hall of Fame is, of course, Len Steal My Sunshine. <laughs> yes, good choice. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Not a day goes by that I don't think of Len. <laughs> for so many reasons. Oh. It, is, um, it is a song that truly defines that generation of uh what year did we say it was i'm gonna do a bit of uh Isn't it late? we got tied up on this one last time didn't we, we did um, we, we had like a full episode on it, it like, is it 2001 or 1999 it, 1999 it was 
Um, so those heady days of summer 1999. And um, yeah, I, I listen back now. It's not a, a, a great song in any way, but <laughs> I, I, listened, I listened to the woman's voice on it and I'm just like, this is really unpleasant actually listening to your voice. You don't have a very good voice at all. But that <laughs> said, it is, it, qu it is quintessential of a vibe and a feeling that was 90, the summer of 1999. And for that reason, I absolutely love it. And uh, we, we had a conversation on the podcast not too long ago um, about the lyrics and um, all that kind of thing. I'll, I'll maybe have to try and find it and, uh, and put it in the description. And it's just it's just the perfect song i think to put in our uh, hall of fame to be uh, to be to to be the first song absolutely um, great choice oh i love that <laughs> thank you so that is that is most definitely the kind of song that we're aiming for i don't want any stairway to heavens even though that is one of the greatest songs of all time it's uh, we want a bit of len and we want a bit of wheatus and we want a bit of uh, want a bit of Sail IV, Sail IV by Bewitched. That's maybe pushing it a bit too far, but <laughs> if that's your choice, then I'll happily acquiesce and, uh, and and allow that in there. No, no, not at all. <laughs> you were the one that brought me onto that one. I was. I had to be reminded of it by you, and usually it's the other way around. <laughs> hey, Dan, do you remember this trash group from the 90s? Mm. <laughs> mm. And then you go and buy all their albums and... Um, get signed photos and, and things well no the, it, i thought that would happen but uh, it did not outside of <gasps> sailor v and i think one of the track of their premiere album wasn't impressed wasn't impressed there wasn't enough irish folksiness to any of it really yeah really disappointing it was generic girl band melodies for the most part <gasps> they only had one or two like real stingers and the rest of them were just you know slow warbling songs about love and it's just like ah yeah ten a penny can do without that anyway yeah so now uh the spotlight is yours and uh, we'll find out next week what matt has decided to induct into the uh cvm singles uh music Brilliant. singles hall of fame I'm it's going to be an obvious one but um yeah i i already know what it is so <laughs> that's one for next week Sound of the underground <laughs> incoming. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no good advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't count because Girls Aloud were informative for my first year at university. So you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, obviously a million different ways that we can take that, but um, yeah, yeah, lots of good fun. Um, God, there was something else that I meant to text you to say this is something that we should talk about, and I completely forgot. Yeah, I, I avoided texting case. you anything this week because I thought, oh, well, you know, the IMDb thing is going to take up an entire episode, so I might as well just just ignore anything else going on in my life because this is going to be all we're, we're going to be doing, and then it's like, oh, shit, we actually have to think about things. Mm. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I've still not seen the Batman. Is that news? Does that count as news? I'm surprised. I would have thought you'd have buckled by this point and gone and seen it. Nah, it's... I don't know. It, maybe I'm just getting old, but the idea of sitting and watching a th almost three-hour oppressively heavy movie in the cinema just brings back Man of Steel vibes. Mm. Not because I think the movie is going to be anywhere near as... Well, n nothing's as awful as and oppressive as Man of Steel, but uh, I remember that movie lasting a small eternity, and because the seats were quite close... I was getting really bad knee ache by the halfway point. So about an hour <laughs> into the movie and my knee was really starting to hurt. And then the movie keeps going and keeps getting worse, exacerbated by my knee pain and everything that I didn't like about the movie. So, you know, no, nothing will ever be as painful as the experience I had watching Man of Steel. Yeah. But I don't want to watch a three hour long, oppressively dark Batman movie in the cinema um so i might just sit it out until it comes out on blu-ray that's very similar to my experience watching uh force awakens except rather than knee pain i was just desperate for the bathroom and then i kind of realized hang on why am i putting myself in so much pain when i'm really not enjoying myself at all i'm happy to miss parts of this film <laughs> and so i think this still oh no i've seen force awakens again yeah, no, I have. I was going to say there's still a part of that film I'd not seen, but that's not true. I have seen it. I uh, huh. How did you end up watching it again? Um, 
We, uh, I, I did Force Awakens and Last Jedi before Rise of Skywalker came out because I wanted to, uh, you know, try and put together some semblance of narrative for those films. And it was all just, <laughs> you know, you may as well just throw in three random films at a wall and, and, uh, yeah, staple them all together that way. Mm. Um, yeah, it was the scene. <laughs> this is how how little I cared at this point. It's the scene where Han Solo's given his speech about uh, invading the Death Star base thing. You know where they're kind of hearkening back to a New Hope. Uh, yeah. With, uh, so how do we blow it up? Yeah. There's always a way to blow them up. Yeah, and I just thought, I know what's going to happen in this scene. It's just a carbon copy of uh, of um, what's the face? Um, what is her name? Um, uh, Ray. Uh, uh, no, in uh, in in a new hope, um, the woman. Oh, Leia. No, the one that's uh, that's giving the speech. It's I. It's not. I'm, all I've got in my head is Grand Moff Tarkin. It's not Tarkin. It's... Uh, Mon Mothma. But Mon she Mothma. Come into, thank until you. Return of the Jedi. Oh. Well, then who gives the? Uh... Oh, you're right. No, it is. It's, it's, it's just it's old just, beard. It's just, man, you're, man. You're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, but it is very similar. I think. Oh no, it's not. It's like the um, they're, they're stood around the uh, facility that Leia's in, aren't they? When uh, when they're, they're kind of watching the attack yeah, take place, it's like on a them. big hollow yeah. thing going round. Yeah. Anyway, Death Star approach in fifteen minutes. That's it. Anyway, I missed all that scene, and uh, I didn't miss much. It turns out. God, I hate that film. Yeah. Uh, uh, have you seen Solo, a Star Wars story? No. Solo, a stop Star asking Wars story me. Yet? <laughs> 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 I'm not going to watch it. Stop asking me. <laughs> but it's super important, Dan, because we learn how everything that we know about Han Solo happened to him over the course of one adventure, and yeah. then nothing else of interest happened to him at all in his entire life. The until only way he met Luke. The only way I'm ever going to get around to watching that film is if we do a reviews and retrospectives on it, which I mean is an option. Uh, I I don't want to watch that. I just I just don't. I just have no you know, desire. The, the funny thing is that. It's probably the best of the lot. That's Rogue what... One only gets good in the last half an hour, you know, the actual siege, just mm. for the spectacle of it. But Solo, once you get past the first 15 minutes of like cramming in as much bullshit as possible, it becomes a rather fun just space adventure that just unfortunately keeps going, hey, Here's another bit of Han Solo trivia that we're fleshing out. And it's like, okay, yes, well done. Slow applause. You read the Wikipedia page and did something with it. Okay, let's get back to the film. The The fact that it relies on betrayal upon betrayal betra upon inevitable betrayal, it, it gets stupid in the mm -hmm. final act. Uh, it's, it's not free of retardation and stupidity. Um, but it's... I've got a friend who absolutely hates Disney Star Wars, hasn't even watched The Last Jedi. He was forced to watch The Force Awakens and said, no, that's enough. No more of this. Oh, good and stuck by his guns ever since. Um, but somehow we ended up watching Solo together and he's watched it several times alone since. Mm. And although he won't accept it as canon, mm. he will watch it as just a sort of fun space adventure movie. Mm. that just happens to share likenesses and names of characters that he is aware of. Mm. And that's probably the best way to look at it. I'll get I'll it, get around to it eventually, yeah. I suppose, but there are just other films. If I'm going to watch a film, there are oh, other God, films. Oh, God, yeah, there's so many other films to watch before Solo. But mm. if you were ever forced to, re to, to watch any of the Disney, you know, Star Wars stuff, the only one I'd recommend would be Solo because Rogue One is incredibly dull for the middle chunk. Yeah, I remember uh, really quite enjoying it. It's uh, that's what I do want to go back to at some point and check out again. Um, it's just none of the characters are interesting, apart no. from um, the the droid. Mm. All the others are just. It doesn't help. There's fifty characters, mm. so they're having to spread the load all the way across. But none of them have personalities that aren't just like miserable or mm. plucky, mm. and they just get lost in the shuffle. So it's. It's only the spectacle of it and the fact that it's like, oh, OT stuff. I recognize the OT stuff. That's great. Mm. But it's purely down to a visual spectacle, whereas Solo, at <clears> least <throat> it's like, well, you know, it's at least it's it's kind of fun. It clips along. There's a decent set piece or, or 
action piece or something going on every 15 minutes or so. I think at the You ta- don't have that entire sludge part in the middle of Rogue One where everything grinds to a halt so we can follow Jyn Ursa and her story to be reunited with her dad. It's like, I don't care. I don't care. Just get to the Atat Walkers. I think at the time after... Because uh, it was the, the, the first film to come out after The Force Awakens, mm. wasn't it? After the Star Wars film. And I didn't feel as though Force Awakens was Star Wars in any way, shape, shape or form. And uh, you can call it fan service or whatever, but seeing Tarkin in Rogue... You know, just things I wasn't expecting because they used the CGI. Um, they they were, were just really cool um, just um, connections, which mm. I didn't f- feel in the slightest in, in Force Awakens. And it felt good to to see this universe actually feel alive through stuff that I uh, recognized and respected at the time. Um, you know, so, so you got Tarkin and Vader shows up and then there's the nice little bit at the end with uh, Leia um, just, just appears. And it's all just really surprising. It's something I wasn't expecting. Mm-hmm. And to see the end of that film then fall immediately into A New Hope, it felt like mm-hmm. something worthwhile and relevant to Star Wars. Um that uh, the the sequel series never managed. Um, or, or, or that was my um, how I experienced when I saw it the first time. Anyway, I might go back and watch it. And you're absolutely right because I can't remember anything prior. Oh no, I, I can. Forrest Whitaker's in it. He does something. Um, oh yeah, so he is. Save the rebellion. Save the dream. Yeah, Jinna so is entirely un- uninteresting. So's her love interest. But the droid's uh, fun. Um, Alan Tudyk's uh, droid is good. Um, what is his name? Because he's getting a series now as well, isn't he? Um, oh no! Oh, I, and the droid's going to be in it. Oh, what's his name? I don't know. Because like, all of these shows are now just getting the name of the character. You know, hmm. Boba Fett, The Mandalorian, Salacious um, Crumb, Salacious Crumb. I'd, I'd watch Salacious Crumb. It'd be like the Muppet Babies. <laughs> <laughs> Rancor. <laughs> oh, you, you the Rancor joke, Chronicles. We got that in the Boba Fett movie, uh, the Boba Fett series. Really? Yeah, near enough. Yeah, we we get to see a Rancor tearing ten bells of shit out of Tatooine, and it is so boring. Oh, but the the way you said that, I expected it to be like some kind of uh, spin off segment in the show, like a robot chicken esque, kind of, oh, where, where he gets his Rancor. own intro, gets his own interest. It's Rancor. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> the Rancor show is filmed in front of a live Don't studio. Don't walk through audience. that door. Don't walk through that door. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Rancor. Rancor. Uh, yeah, he's, he's got a cigar. He comes home after a hard day's work, terrorizing uh, uh, the. I don't know, the dungeons of Jabba's uh, lair. <laughs> Rancor is filmed in front of a live palace audience. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're going to be desperate enough for ideas that give it time and there will be like another... Oh, what was it called? Do you remember Star Tours? The comedy sketch show that George Lucas was trying to get off the ground. Yeah, I do. Thankfully yeah, never yeah. went anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been in there somewhere, surely. Mm. Um... This is completely irrelevant to everything and not particularly interesting necessarily, but uh, it's Natalie Zaya's birthday. She's 47 today. Natalie Zaya played Winona in Justified. Um, ah, funny enough, I was only thinking about Justified early this morning and oh, just yeah. how good of a show it was. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and that's... how they really shouldn't be bringing it back. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's one of those everyday thoughts for me. <laughs> it's just like, Justified. That's a really good. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Please keep it dead. <laughs> Don't ruin it like every other show. Um, yeah, it's had a production now. Had a crush on her, so uh, well, I was watching Justified. So happy birthday, Natalie Zay. She looks Understand. So fantastic for forty-seven. Oh, there are just so many charming women in that show. Yeah, there are. The southern accents definitely help. Yes. But, uh... Yes, it's um, it's it's it is a struggle managing uh, how delightful. All of the ladies are in that uh, in that show. That that goddamn Raylan really knows how to uh, to, to to pick a harem. He does. Ah, uh, if only we had the the looks, charisma, and general talents of Timothy Oliphant, <laughs> yes. including his name. You know, the name like a stage name. I'm guessing of Timothy Oliphant. Mm. You're destined to go places beyond Middle Earth. The Conan O'Brien show, for one. 
<laughs> what was the name of the other late night talk show host? The British one who uh, Christine um, Bell was. Oh, really Christine Bell. Good um, with. Uh, uh, Craig Ferguson. Craig Ferguson, thank you. That's yes. been bugging me for a few weeks now. Has it? <laughs> oh, their dynamic is absolutely fantastic. You should um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. They're uh, they're slowly uploading literally every single Craig Ferguson channel. It's, I don't think it's official. Um, just some like Uber fan that must be collecting videos or something from from somewhere. But um, <laughs> it's, it's it's great to see them all go up. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm just going through the cast list of Justified on this, while we're on this. I'd forgotten all about Win Duffy, my favourite henchman. Oh, Win Duffy's sensational. He's so good. Oh, we need to do a Justified episode. Yeah, it's just... Oh, I, uh, you don't want to spoil it, that's the problem. We we need to do this full-time is what we need to do. If we if we turn this into a full-time gig, I'd just... It would be so much fun going through uh, like a season, a week, and just mm. doing... Um, you know, just full on twelve hour EFAP type dives into every single episode. Um, that would be so cool. But uh yeah, it's it's sensational. One sensational series and as you say, it breaks my heart that they're bringing it back. But just because mm. let good things stay good. <laughs> they don't not everything needs to be brought back and I know, it's not even like it was one of those big household things like, well of course we've got to bring back Hawaii five O. No mm. one knows what happens in a single episode, but people know of Hawaii Five O. Mm. But Justified was one of those under the radar shows that had a nice cult following. Somehow it managed to get the entire the entire story played out in six seasons, um, and and then it finished perfectly. You don't need to do anything else with it. Mm. It's it's done. Leave it be. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, a couple of. Um iffy seasons but on the whole you always enjoy it you always put your faith in the writers that they know where they're going with their story mm -hmm. and uh and it does it, it finishes itself uh really satisfying which again as we were saying about dark is something that's uh not all too common in um no it's a rarity in in tv series and that was one of them that stuck the landing uh really really well um yeah i'm i'm, I'm looking through it now as well um uh, it, it, Caitlin Dever is, is another one. I think she's becoming a, a proper kind of big actress now, and that's great to see because um, she played uh, Loretta. Uh, I think in season two, she was kind of the 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 girl that um, that all of the um, uh, fuss was being made of. Uh, the, the Bennets, that's right. Oh, she, the Bennets, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she came. She's doing voice acting or something, isn't she? Because we sort of fan casted her as um, she'd, Ellie. She'd have been the perfect point. Ellie. She really yeah. would. Even though she's, I think she's, oh, she's twenty six now. Oh, she'll be twenty six this year. Um, but she still has the uh, the perfect look for it. Um, uh, yeah. My infatuation with Wendy Crow as well. Oh yeah, she um, wasn't she in like a. I feel as though she, this is a Mandela affecting this. I feel as though she was in. Oh no, she was, wasn't she? In uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Is that Something what she like was? That. In? Hang on, film and television career. Uh, she was in t an episode of Twin Peaks. Yeah, uh, remember playing that. Playing the younger sister of Donna. Yeah, that's right. Uh, she only da -da 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 -da. lasts one episode, and then I think uh, they got a new a new sister. Uh, Law and Order. Uh, We've been back in the nineties. Uh, so Twin Peaks, I tell you, his parents are. Uh, oh, she was Sybil. in the original Dune. Sybil, maybe I'm thinking of Sybil. Is that where I know her from? Uh, Sopranos. Oh, of course, yeah, she's in Sopranos. No, she, she wasn't. I feel as though um, Alicia Witt. She, I, I feel as though she was in a Nickelodeon show, and she wasn't. And that is a massive <laughs> Nand Ma uh, Mandela effect thing for me because. I, I just can't get my head around it. I thought she was in like, "Are you afraid of the dark?" or something like that, and she wasn't. Huh. That's really strange. Oh, she comes back for the mini series of Twin Peaks. Oh, that's cool. Ah, brilliant! Because now there's something you need to get on. You know, you've you've talked me into watching the dark. <laughs> Stop you saying the dark. With... It's just dark. <laughs> the dark. Well, the the dark TV show. <laughs> yes. Um You got me to watch dark, so yeah. now you need to. I, I know, I know, I need to, I'm desperate to watch it, but at the same time, it's, it's it makes me happy to know that it's always there, just to, just, just as a, a just as something to behold and go, ah, <laughs> ah, 
practice all, all the potential in the world. Oh, I don't watch it. Uh, no, I'm going to... Um, I will. I'm going to do it soon. Um, I, I have said that to myself. Uh, it's just whether or not I do it while I'm still finishing my book or uh, yeah. after I do it. We'll see. I'd say just get on with it. Mm. 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 Yeah, okay. Maybe. I've still got season three of uh, of Dark to, to go, so I'll, I'll, I'll decide after that. Okay, true. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Uh, any final thoughts before we uh, bring this episode to a close? It's just been a lot of friendly waffle, really. I don't even know really what yes. we'll kind of name this episode. It's just been... <laughs> A whole load of waffle. A whole um, load of waffle. I, I'm just sort of caught up looking at the cast list of uh, Justified again, just going, oh, yeah, that character and that character and that character. What a delightful trip down memory road. I've now <laughs> completely eliminated the need to rewatch it for a while because I can now remember absolutely everything that happened in it just from looking at the cast list. So, mm. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I just cheated myself out of some good TV post dark. <laughs> oh, I'll have to make do with more bloody Disney films. Did you uh, did you buy the the complete Blu-ray series of of Justified? Yeah, yeah. Which is now going to be redundant, isn't it? I I think there's a minor case of disc rot in the final minutes <gasps> of the final episode as well. No, as Raymond is confronting a certain woman about a certain secret that she has, and it's just like, oh, there's a bit of a glitch. Oh. It just goes sort of pixely, and there's a bit of a stutter. But it's like, oh no, please, please don't make me rebuy an entire season's worth for one disc that glitches out literally two minutes from the end of the season mm. 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 physical media i need you and yet you let me down so frequently i forgot that mary steenbergen was in justified jesus you're right there's so many uh mm. notable actors in uh in this series mary steenbergen uh ted danson's wife who is in elf and she's in everything really um <laughs> Uh, and Sam Elliott, of course. I've got Sam Elliott was uh, a key player. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, who else did I just see? I mean, uh, my favourite will always be Jeremy Davis, who plays Dickie Bennett. I just think he's phenomenal. In yes, everything I've he's ever just seen him such a delight. He never, ever gets a win. Yeah, he's, uh, he's great. You have to think that he's like... I'm not even going to say a threat, but you almost think that he's going to be some kind of antagonistic force from the first first episode, mm. and then it turns out he's nothing but the universe is punching back. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets rich and buys that giant swimming pool <laughs> <laughs> and invests in whores. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, I forgot. Yeah. Oh, poor Dicky. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh. And on that note, we'll leave it there this week. Um, we definitely will be doing the uh, Top 250 IMDb uh, discussion next week, because that'll be fun. Um, are you, you going to um, watch any of the films or just kind of get your knowledge updated on any of them? Because I, w I was thinking, like, a lot of the top, top films, it's been ages since I've seen Shawshank Redemption, same with Godfather, um, uh, 12 Angry Men, I think, was a bit recent. Schindler's Nest, I've never seen all the way through. Um, so, yeah, are you, you going to be updating yourself or just kind of going on uh, memory of what you've seen? I don't know if I'll have time, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but with Final Fantasy VII eating up most of my weekend, Street <laughs> Fighter, obviously, needs to be rewatched and absorbed. Mm. That'll be two evenings worth. Uh, and then I won't have the house to myself again from Monday onwards. So, mm. yeah, if, if I can get any of them under my belt, but uh, more than likely, it'll probably end up being Frozen Two and Coco that I dedicate the next two evenings to. So <laughs> we'll um, we'll just have a generalised discussion then, rather than uh, diving yeah. deep into anything in particular. Just pointing out the the oddities and uh, and things that um, may be interesting of mm -hmm. note, and how we can be contrarians to probably most of them. Oh well, I mean that's our role, really, isn't it? Yeah, The Godfather um, is a good movie, but. <laughs> Top 10? Nonsense. <laughs> I don't even think that's a contrarian point of view. I think most people would agree with me. The Godfather is incredibly overrated. We'll have that conversation next week. Yes. Um, so, yes, join us then. In the meantime, we are doing um, Street Fighter this weekend Yay! for reviews and retrospectives, which is going to be a lot of fun. I think that um, 
that might actually be our theme now for for the next few weeks i've just decided these kind of schlocky stupid films that we can put on and just laugh at. Although, although we're doing society as well aren't we i was going to say um, society or should we stick with the theme should we do street fighter and mortal kombat um you don't want to do mortal kombat as a part of a ah now here's the thing we can do mm. mortal kombat as part of a paul ws anderson season or we can True. do mortal kombat and Mortal Kombat, um, the second Annihilation. One. Annihilation, thank you. The best one. And then it's a it's a kind of twofer, which you you can't really have Annihilation in the Paul W. Sanderson season. Uh, mm, so it's shall an we? Outlier. Shall we do that? Shall we do Street Fighter, MK, MK Annihilation, and then oh, for the hell of it, we'll throw in the shit new one as well. Shall we? Do you want to do yeah, that? Yeah, why not? Because we haven't actually covered that. We we had a long well, you had a, a wonderfully long rant about it. But... Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd okay. be worthwhile. I'd yeah. like you to 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 watch that. I think, and we'll have a discussion, and uh, <laughs> we can, I, I can get sufficiently angry, and um, it'll be entertaining all at the same time. Yes, absolutely. Rather than, but at least we know we got the buffer of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Annihilation before we have to get to the twenty twenty one Mortal Kombat. So yes, we've we've got three three nice padded weeks until then. Excellent. We've just set up the next month there then. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then maybe we'll do something respectable like... Um, society. Oh, Society, of course. Society, Pink Flamingos. <laughs> what else can we add on that list? How many other John Waters movies can we add in there? <laughs> uh, Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Schindler's List. Because <laughs> let's face it, us covering Schindler's List <laughs> would just be, you know, worthy of Society, Pink Flamingos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wonderful can't wait right guys um yeah we'll see you next time take it easy farewell good evening good night goodbye adios and adios ah oh, i got there before you no you didn't no bye <laughs>